what is up you guys welcome back to my channel hi hello it has been a very long time since i have shown my face on here i think the last time i posted a video was like six months ago and the last time i sat down in front of the camera was even longer than that so yes it's been a minute and i'm sorry for disappearing but i'm back and if you did click on this video you would have seen the title so you already know what you're here for but i'm just going to be sitting down and chatting with you guys and giving you the big life update i guess because it has almost been like we're at the end of 2022 and i feel like i have so much to catch you guys up on so get comfy get snacks drinks whatever it is that you like to have when you watch videos because i feel like this is gonna be a long one so where do i begin i feel like um the last time i posted a video was something to do with when i was in paris with my fiance those of you guys who've been watching me for a minute would know that i was in a long distance relationship and of course during the whole pandemic ordeal we didn't see each other for almost two years so at the end of 2021 we did meet up in paris and we spent christmas new year's and my birthday together and those would have been like the last bunch of vlogs that i did post now mind you i did definitely vlog in some sense throughout this year but it wasn't so structured as to where i could openly post it without properly updating you guys so i just i did vlog i didn't forget about you guys but it just wasn't to my standard i guess you could say so you will be seeing like little clips of like what i did throughout the year as i'm talking which i hope you guys enjoy but that is the reason why i haven't posted anything and i guess part of that is as well that obviously with the pandemic and everything that went on that feels like so long ago now that i'm saying it but um it was definitely a down time in my life and be positive all the time so my mental health definitely did decline throughout that time and it would go in waves like i'd be good then i'd be down then i'd be okay then i'd be like just hanging on so it definitely was tough for me and it was again hard to show face on camera and kind of keep you guys updated on what was going on with me because i did have my good days but i did also have my bad days so again that's probably another reason why i wasn't actively posting on here i totally went ghost on all social media pretty much like i didn't post on youtube i didn't post on instagram I, in fact i think i deleted my instagram just because i really wanted to focus on myself and my own mental health and be a little more selfish with myself i guess because obviously i'm so used to documenting everything that's going on with me but throughout this year it definitely did feel good to not have that pressure on me to have to constantly be like switched on and posting and only show the good things and not the bad things that i was going through but just to pick things up from where i left off i guess i left paris after being with my fiance for almost two months over there and then you know we went back to our normal lives he went back to the states i went back to australia and then i think two months later march april yes we did see each other in april of this year which felt good because we had become so accustomed to not seeing each other at all but yes he did come and visit me in april which was the first time that he visited me in australia since he proposed in 2020 so we didn't really do too much it was mainly just us spending time together so obviously we just did like the couple of things went on dates he spent time with my family but that was only for a week and then he left so april then may june i made the spontaneous trip to come to the us to spend summer here so i was here for a good amount of time i think that would have been the longest amount of time that we had physically spent together throughout our entire relationship so yeah i got to experience my first summer in the states which it was pretty eventful we did so much stuff the day that i landed we actually went to a filipino blog party in brooklyn i was completely out of it and jet lagged but it was fun i had a lot of fun and it was cool to kind of see 
you know the whole filipino scene out here because obviously i'm from australia and i know what it's all about over there it's pretty much the same over here too but it was cool to go to a block party even though i was super jet lagged and i'm not sure if a lot of you guys know this but alan does have a daughter her name is alina and she is eight years old so she did have school during that time when i had just arrived it was like the last few weeks of school before summer so it was kind of just all about getting into that routine of like waking up early taking her to school and then doing what we needed to do during the day and then going to pick her up from school and then homework whatever else so that was cool to kind of get into a routine because i definitely do thrive off routines but once she finished school for the school year and she had her summer break we were able to kind of plan more things that we wanted to do during the summer and kind of just experience that like US summer type of thing, if that makes sense. So we definitely did plan a bunch of things to do over the summer. Well, it was more so Alan planning everything. But once the summer break really did start, we actually made a trip to Massachusetts, which is actually where Alan grew up. So we went there to go see his sister, Mary Jo, and nephew, Jace, because obviously they do live out there. And we actually went camping, well, more so glamping, because we went with a bunch of Mary Jo's like friends. And they did the whole camping thing, but we did the glamping thing where we had like a little, what do you call it, like a little cabin. And it was hot, you guys, as in summer heat, like back in Australia. So it was very hot, um, but I was very grateful. But it was cool to experience going to a park and camping. And it was just a lot of fun, like just spending time with people and getting to meet everybody. And, you know, they had a campfire. I saw, what are they called? Um, not glowworms. Is that what they're called, glowworms? No. Fireflies. I actually saw fly fireflies, which I thought were like only a thing for the movies, but they're actually real. We do not have fireflies in Australia. So yeah, I got to see fireflies and it was really cool. I don't know if I have any footage of that just because they're kind of hard to capture on, on camera, like on my phone. So I'm not really sure if I have any footage of that. Hopefully I do. But yeah, it was really cool to see those. And yeah, we camped there for like two days and then we ended up going to Lake Compounds, which is a water park. And believe it or not, I had never been to a water park before, you know, like with slides and wave pools and such. So that was my first time experiencing going to a water park. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Lake Compounds is one of, or if not the oldest amusement park here in the US. I have to look that up. I'm not really sure, but it was really cool to see. They have like the water park section and then the other half is just like mostly rides. So it was cool to experience that. And I think that would also be my first like theme park. Would you call that a theme park or maybe just an amusement park? Yeah, my first like amusement park here in the States because I haven't been to like Six Flags or anything like that. But um, yeah, it was cool to go and do that. So I had a lot of fun my first time at a water park. So after camping, we obviously went back to his sister's place. And then the next day, we decided to do a day trip to Boston, which was really cool. It was a little bit of an off day to go and do that just because it was raining, if I'm not mistaken. But we went to Fenway Park and did the whole like tourist thing. We went on a duck boat, which was really cool. And we got to drive it. Alina and I actually got to drive the duck boat. You know, like one of those boats that is on the roads and then it just goes into the water. It was really cool. So we did that. And just kind of learning about the history of Boston the city itself and all the special landmarks and stuff was really cool so yeah that was a lot of fun i really enjoyed that too and then after that road trip we came back and i think that was when i went to trader joe's for the first time which i was very excited about because alan's sister gave me so many recommendations and she was telling me about how i need to go there you guys i love trader joe's yeah i was very excited about going to trader joe's definitely did a big haul and stocked up on some things from there and then i think from there we kind of just settled into more of a routine we went to the beach a couple of times and had like you know our own date nights as well and then we even made a trip to the statue of liberty the last time we went to the states i 
definitely did the whole tourist thing like jammed it all into that short amount of time that I was here but the one thing that I didn't get to do was go to the Statue of Liberty so Alan actually decided to take me there we had a day trip and it was really cool to see and that whole thing turned into a complete full day date because after that he took me to the floating island which I don't know if that's its actual name but it's like this man-made floating island on the pier I don't know what pier it is but um, yeah it was really cool to see and then after that we actually went for a walk and we stumbled across Artichoke Pizza which I had when I came here back in 2019 and oh my gosh the literal artichoke pizza so good and then after that we decided to might have been a bad idea but we decided to go into times square i think it was a friday night at that point oh my goodness you guys it felt like it was new year's in the summer like it was so busy and we didn't even stay in there for very long we realized like okay maybe this is a bad idea but there was a lot of people around and during this time middle of this year people were still wearing masks here and there but it just felt like no pandemic even happened like the city was alive it was busy there were tons of tourists and yeah i honestly wasn't expecting it to be so busy but i think it was like the busiest i had ever seen times square i think the next thing that happened after that was fourth of july which was obviously my first time experiencing fourth of july independence day in the states so that day we what did we do we went to go and have lunch with alan's friends kat and esteban and that was really nice because it was just cool to you know have that like barbecue spread and just kind of experience that and then they did have the fireworks and i did watch it on the tv and we could see like some of them you know out along the river but only like the tippy tops of the fireworks obviously we don't celebrate that in australia we do have our own like australia day but i feel like in the US they are very patriotic when it comes to that stuff so yeah it was interesting to see what that was all about then I think after that was Alan's sister's birthday Mary Jo's birthday so she actually made the trip to come and stay with us and we what did we do we went into I think it's Woodside Queens where there's like a little like kind of Filipino community there and we went to a restaurant called Ihawan which I was missing like that Filipino food. We had so much good food that day, delicious. And after that, we went to Chelsea Market, which I don't think I had been there before. That was my first time going there and kind of walking through there and seeing like all the food that was available. And there's so much stuff, like so much food. Definitely would have to go do it multiple times because there's just so many options in there and then we did take them to the floating island to kind of see what that was all about as well and then after that we dropped the kids off and went to a restaurant in Hoboken I can't remember the name of it if I can think of it I'll put it on the screen but um, we just had like some dinner and drinks over there the three of us and it was really cool so yeah, that was a good way to celebrate her birthday and I was so glad that she was able to come here and we were able to do that with her because I had a lot of fun. I just remembered Alan and I went for our first like date night here in Hoboken. But yeah, we hadn't been on like a date night with the two of us, like a proper like grown date night where he lives. So it was like cool to kind of be able to go out together have some drinks and do that. So I think a week after that, we actually flew out to San Francisco, which is where majority of Alan's family is located. They live over on the West Coast. He lives on the East. So Alan, Alina and I, we went on a plane. That was actually our first time flying together because Alan and I had never flown on a plane together. We always fly separate to meet somewhere or fly to each other. So it was our first time like flying together, which was really cool and we actually surprised Alina because she had no idea that that's where we were going I had told her that we were going to Colorado to like see an aunt or something which I completely made up but we went there and we were picked up by his brother and mum and we went to In-N-Out which was I didn't expect to go there as soon as we got off the plane but we had in and out do i like it yes i think it's good but i just think i like shake shack better so from there 
Day one in San Francisco was kind of like our tourist day. We went to Pier 39, I think it is, and we kind of walked around there, had lunch together, took photos, saw what that was all about. Mind you, it was summer at this time, obviously, but it's cold in San Francisco. I feel like it's colder there than it is in winter in Brisbane where I'm from. So I kind of struggled with that because it's like, you know, you go from somewhere where it's super hot and then you think you're in the same country, like it's bound to be hot there too. But it was chilly there. I feel like it's always windy there. What else did we do? We went to go look at the streets that are like super steep. I feel like I sound like such a tourist right now talking about this. Um, but I think it was Lombard Street. We went to go and take pictures there and kind of drive around there and look through there, which was really cool. And then we went to like the city center, I believe it was, which is like Union Square. And we also saw the trolleys, I think they call them. In Australia, we call them trams, which I think they're like a same, the same kind of thing where they run on the road, but they run on tracks. So we did go on a trolley, which was really fun as well. And I feel like that day I definitely had like the typical San Francisco experience. I did also get to meet Alan's niece, Deja, for the first time, which was really cool because I feel like I did already meet her because we've spoken on FaceTime before. So meeting her in person, I felt like I already knew her, but yeah, I did meet her, which was awesome after like I don't know how to explain it, but it's like after kind of getting to know someone on the phone and such and then meeting them in person, it just feels completely like natural and normal. So that was on another day. And then I think on that same day, like that same night, we went out to like a seafood boil place and I'd never been to a seafood boil place, you know, where they have the seafood in a bag and then you just like eat with your hands and it was really good though i definitely want to go to another one so that was a lot of fun experiencing that too and then i think the next day after that was when i got to meet all of alan's family they kind of organized like a dinner not really a dinner but just kind of like a gathering at this place where we had like drinks and little like nibblies and stuff i don't know what to call it um but yeah i met the rest of alan's family and i'm talking like cousins even aunts and uncles like cousins babies just everybody it was like a big gathering and i finally got to meet like all of his family so it was nice to all be in one place and finally get to meet them all which was cool and then the next day after that i think we did like another little tourist day but that day was freezing you guys like i was so confused by the weather the fact that it's like summer but people are wearing puffer jackets it was cold that day freezing um but yeah that was cool but then after that we met up with other family members and kind of just had lunch like a late lunch with them and then we went to oh i can't remember what the place is called but it's like they have really good chocolate and ice cream and such i think it's giadeli giadeli some something something with a g and an l at the end maybe i'm wrong but it was really good and then the day after that we had to fly back home we went back to the east coast so i think after that all that was left was like about a week yeah about a week and then I left. I flew back home to Australia and we said our goodbyes. But it wasn't so sad this time because of the fact that I was flying home to go and prepare my place because they were gonna come and visit me three days later. So I would have flown back with them, but my trip to the States was very spontaneous. I had it intended to go there, but I knew that they were gonna be coming to visit me in August. I had nothing prepared though, like it was actually Alan's mom, his daughter Alina and him who were coming to stay with me at my place. So I was like, let me go home because I need to go and like get things organized, like have a space for you guys to sleep and just organize my place. So it wasn't so sad. I flew back home exhausted, still had to adjust with the whole time change as well. But I also had to organize my place because I wanted them to be comfortable when they came to stay with me. So. It wasn't so much of a sad goodbye, it was it was hard like leaving obviously and getting so used to being together every day and being in a routine um, but it wasn't so sad because I was like I'm gonna see you in three days anyway so it wasn't too bad. So yeah that brings us to August when Alan, his mom and his daughter Alina came to stay with me 
at my place in Australia and it was cool because obviously Alan has been there multiple times but it was nice to have his mom and his daughter come and finally visit and see where I come from and what it's all about and to just give them the full Australian tourist experience. So I picked them up from the airport the weather was kind of opposite so they came from summer to like winter what well, was my winter even though it wasn't really that cold but i pretty much picked them up from the airport went home dropped off the luggage freshened up all that kind of thing and then we went straight out because we wanted to make sure that we could get like the body clock time change thing sorted like sooner than later because it is very difficult flying from australia to the states we're on completely opposite time zones. So when it's nighttime in Australia, it's daytime in the States. When it's daytime in Australia, it's nighttime in the States, vice versa. So it was important to kind of stay on top of not falling asleep straight away. So we decided to go out, did a little bit of grocery shopping, got what we needed for the week, and then we met up with my parents. And that was obviously my parents' first time meeting Alina. Obviously they've spoken to her on FaceTime and on phone calls and whatnot, but they got to meet her in person and same with Alan's mom. So after that, we went and had lunch at Nando's, which they do not have Nando's in the States, which by the way, is one of my favorite places to eat. And that was cool just to kind of have a little bit of like family bonding time, everybody meeting each other and just spending time together. And then I think after that, we went home and crashed. Like it was a very early night because they were adjusting with the time zone difference. I was still adjusting with the time zone difference as well because I feel like it takes at least a week to finally feel like you're waking up at the correct time it's definitely difficult dealing with the time change and feeling constantly delirious like you're supposed to be asleep but you're awake and like you're hungry at like random hours of the night just because your body is confused with the time change but the next day after that we decided to take them to a zoo just to really make them feel like they were in australia because it's not like a big culture shock but one thing that i definitely wanted them to experience was like you know, the typical koalas, kangaroos, all that kind of thing. So we decided to take them to the zoo the next day. But that morning we had Alan's mom try Vegemite, which I'm sure you already know. And she liked it, which was really good. So she tried that and then yes, we went to the zoo. And there I think we fed rainbow lorikeets, we saw koalas, we held a koala, or they held a koala, and we got to feed kangaroos as well and that's when they started to feel like wow i feel like i'm in australia so i actually don't know if there's any zoos in the states that have australian animals i am gonna have to look into that i'm sure there would be but yeah it was really cool to give them that experience after we finished at the zoo we just kind of took them to mount kuitha which is pretty much like a central mountain lookout point to view the entire city but at the bottom of Mount Kuitha is like a botanical garden so we took them through there because Alan's mom and obviously my mom are into that thing which by the way my mom did come and do a lot of this like tourist stuff with us which was really good because obviously I hadn't seen my mom for like a couple months so it was nice to spend time with her as well and yeah we took them up to Mount Kuitha took some photos saw the sights and then the next day after that we decided to make a little road trip to the Gold Coast which is about like 45 minutes to an hour from where I live so not far at all but we wanted to take them to the Gold Coast, but specifically the place where Alan proposed to me, which was cool. It was nice to take them there because when Alan did propose, we FaceTimed with everybody from that spot to like announce what had just happened. So it was cool for them to actually see it in person. We call it our little like proposal spot. And then we actually went to the beach, which for me, it was too cold. For Alan and Alina, they went swimming. So that was cool. We got to just kind of play on the beach. My mom, Alan's mom, me, Alan and Alina were just spending time on the beach. And then I took them to that mall on the coast. I think it's Pack Fair, Pacific Fair. We went there and pretty much spent the rest of the afternoon there. We did have like a couple of days here and there in between, just so that, you know, obviously you don't feel like you're exhausted at the end of every single day like going out and doing stuff every day definitely does become like taxing but a day or two after that i took them into the city just to kind of see what our like 
I guess you could call it like downtown is even though we just call it the city we went around there got some like tourist um, souvenirs that's what they're called we got some souvenirs and such and then I took them to South Bank which is like how do I describe it there's like uh, rock pools there to swim in or like man-made beaches there to swim in and it's just like a cool place to be for the kids as well like for Alina to experience like playing in the playgrounds there hearing the kids like with their Aussie accents and all that kind of stuff so that was cool as well and then I think we had like a potato and a stick there too because they have like these little market stores there so that was cool and then after that we decided to swing by my parents place my mom had made some arrascaldo so we had some of that too and then after that was the weekend i believe so my mom had set up this whole like kind of like barbecue my parents place has this big deck so we had a barbecue and just kind of had some quality like family time once again this trip was about giving them like that Aussie like tourist experience but also like spending time with family because obviously I don't know when the next time is that they will be able to come out and visit so it was cool to give them that like tourist experience but also like be able to spend time like as families like bonding together was really cool and then after lunch we decided to go head to Kangaroo Point and we walked around there but yeah I wanted to take them there just because I feel like that's another like iconic tourist place to kind of visit in Brisbane. I think we ended that day at my favorite like tree. There's a specific tree underneath the Story Bridge in Brisbane that has like all these fairy lights throughout it and yeah that was pretty much that day. We did end up also going to another zoo which I hadn't been to. We went to Australia Zoo which is about maybe two hours from where I live. So we made the trip up there and we went to the zoo, which was really cool, Steve Irwin's zoo. Like I said, I'd never been there, so it was a first for all of us, my mum included. And we got to see, you know, the croc show, have that whole Aussie animal experience once again and, and just give them that feeling of like they're in Australia. During the time that they visited in August, there was the Royal Exhibition show or Eka, as we Aussies call it for short, um, which is basically like a giant fair. This is how I could compare it to like an American thing. It's like a fair where there's like um, animals to like petting little things for animals. There's um, produce showcases. Um, what else is there? Rides, there's a lot of rides, a lot of food stalls and show bags which is basically like merch in a bag i guess i don't know for like different companies like cadbury chocolate you can buy like a little show bag so it's basically like a fair and i wanted to take them to that just because i mean i personally don't go to them the last time i had been to the echo was when i was i don't know a, a kid so it's not something that i typically go to but i felt like when is the next time you're ever going to say that you were able to go to the Eka in Brisbane, Australia of all places. So we decided to go to that and it was really cool. Um, spent the whole day there pretty much with the five of us, Alan, his mom, his daughter, me and my mom. And that was actually their first time taking the train. I don't think every single time Alan had come to visit me, we'd never taken public transport, which I know sounds so like it's such a random fact because um, I typically just drive him everywhere. <laughs> but that was his first time and their first time going on a train so just something to note <laughs> the next day after that Alan's mom was going back home so she left a day earlier than Alan and Alina did just because that was the only flight that we were able to get for her and she was flying to the west coast whereas Alan and Alina were going all the way to the east coast so she did leave a day earlier so we did drop her to the airport in the morning and then after that um, we went to have Korean barbecue with my mom and my dad and Alan, Alina and I so that was cool and then I think we went to the arcade too so the five of us went to the arcade and then after that was Alan and Alina's last day and they flew back home to the States and I stayed back in Australia that pretty much like catches everything up to speed for what I did this year in between all that obviously I was like doing things I actually I didn't update you guys I moved out I moved back in with my parents just because I'm in like a 
how do I explain it? Like a transitory, transitional period of my life right now. My lease had ended at my old place and it was kind of just like, you know, like I said, I'm in a bit of a transitional phase in my life right now. So I'm so grateful that my parents were able to offer me to live with them while I navigate through that. And then that brings me to now, November 2022, I'm in the States. I know some of you might not recognize this background, but this is Alan's place and we're in our bedroom. I mean, as you can see, the picture's up there. But we decided that I was going to make the spontaneous trip to come visit because Alan's friends, Joe and Nita, were actually getting married. They had their wedding celebrations just this past weekend and um, I was invited to that. So. I think two weeks ago, Alan was telling me that he was going to the wedding and I was like, oh yeah, I was invited to that. And he's like, okay, like come on over. And I flew out like five days later. So it was very last minute, very spontaneous. We bought the ticket and then I flew out five days later. Like I said, this year has been very crazy. There's been a lot going on. And at times it's been really hard to keep up with, especially like keeping myself up with things, but then also keeping updated like with YouTube and such. So that's why it was so difficult for me to to be present and like what was going on with me, but then also try and like document everything and include you guys because I do love doing that. But I feel like this year, 2022 has definitely been, as I said, my selfish year, which I don't like to say, but at the same time, I think it was definitely overdue because I have never done that. Like where I've just, you know, put the camera down and just taken a moment to be like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy the moment for what it is right now and be more present. So yeah, I, I think we're up to speed now. I'm here with Alan in the States. I think I said, I'm just visiting. So I'm gonna be here for a while and I will be documenting and vlogging while I am here. As I said, it's November. This is like real time right now. Today is November the 16th, 2022. And I'm very excited to be here because this is my first like holiday season. So yeah, it's getting colder. I'm definitely feeling that like chestnuts roasting by the open fire type of vibe. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to experience the cold, which sounds crazy. Everyone that's spoken to me is like, oh, this is your first like holiday season here. And I'm like, yeah, I'm so excited to see the snow. And they're like, you're crazy. But I've never seen snow before. Thanksgiving is coming up next week and we have like Christmas, New Year's, all of that. So I am very excited to be here and I'm so happy that I'm able to sit down finally and kind of just update you guys and be here again because I have missed you guys. I have missed vlogging and uploading and like interacting with you guys. I definitely want to continue to do this. I know that I left for a long while and completely just disappeared. And to anybody who reached out to me or left me comments and such, even like on mine and Alan's channel, people have been asking if I was okay. I really appreciate that because I did leave without saying anything. So I'm very grateful and thankful that there are people who watch me that still continue to support me even though I haven't been here. Um, but I guess I've just been kind of navigating through what my life is right now and kind of figuring out that whole routine of things because it's very hard. I definitely thrive off routine and being in a routine, it's very hard for me to function normally when that's not a thing. It's a little more difficult for me to stay on top of things without routine. So I'm excited now that I finally am able to get back into things. I definitely will be on here. I'm gonna be weekly vlogging from now on, which I'm so excited for because I'm so happy that I'm gonna be able to bring you guys fresh new content and also just kind of document my whole experience of being here during the holidays. But yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. So if you sat through this entire video, thank you so much. I appreciate you, I love you, and I am grateful that you're willing to sit here and listen to me. Like I said, I missed you guys and I'm so happy to be back. But from here on, I guess that I'll see you guys in my next video. I hope everybody is staying safe. 
looking after yourselves, looking after each other. I hope everybody is well and healthy. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.